Hey guys, Jules here for WhatCulture.com and I want to talk to you today about cancelled TV shows or more specifically about TV shows that were cancelled last year to the surprise of many. Now, in all transparency, I did intend to record this at the end of last year but what with the rush to get other lists done and the ever seductive call of my holiday away from the pukes that work here, it's much like your mum goosing for a meaty length slipped through the cracks. Apologies, and also, there's my one per list. So let's gather round in the warming grey of a cold 2019 and look at those that we lost along the way last year when it came to the boob tube. I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 big TV shows that were cancelled last year, and why. Number 10. I'm dying up here. With an impressive cast led by Oscar winner Melissa Leo and being executive produced by Jim Carrey, Showtime's I'm Dying Up Here had a lot of potential. Telling the story of the famed Los Angeles comedy circuit of the 1970s, it centers on a group of comedians at Goldie's Comedy Club who attempt to earn a spot on Johnny Carson's Tonight Show. Amazon have achieved great success with their similar-ish The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, but Showtime were unable to make this one land. The first season received mixed reviews, but worse was that it just failed to pick up any sort of audience. The first season averaged around 150,000 viewers, and the second, despite a change in time slot, didn't get much better. With poor ratings and presumably quite an expensive cast, there wasn't much incentive for Showtime to keep on making these episodes, and I'm Dying Up Here had to die for good. Number 9. Orange is the New Black 2018 was the end of an era for Netflix. Their original, original series, House of Cards, came to an end with its sixth season and ending enforced in part by the allegations against Kevin Spacey, and they also announced that another of their stalwarts was coming to an end. Orange is the New Black, which debuted in 2013 just a few months after House of Cards, has long been one of Netflix's most successful shows. Even without proper ratings, it's often been amongst the most binged watched series of any given year and 2018 was no exception. Creatively, however, it's kind of been coming towards an end for a while. Netflix gave this series a massive show of faith back in 2016 when they renewed it for seasons 5, 6 and 7, but now they've announced that they're not going to be renewing after season 7 and that will be the last one it airs this year. The show has shown signs of a decline in the last couple of years, especially season 5, and it's better for Netflix to end things now rather than completely running it into the ground. Also, because this is now a known factor, it means that hopefully the series can go out on a high note. Number 8. Inhumans Marvel's Inhumans was pretty much dead on arrival. It just kind of took ABC six months to sign the death certificate. Inhumans was first announced as a Phase 3 movie back in 2014, with a release of 2018 that was then pushed back a year and then removed from the schedule completely. Eventually, it became a TV show which debuted on the Disney-owned ABC channel last year. But it was absolutely not worth the wait. Critics had already savaged the series prior to airing, and it's easy to see why. With wooden performances and some poor technical work, it's a far cry from the standard we're used to in the MCU, even on the small screen. The ratings reflected that too, with ABC bosses admitting that they were disappointed by the viewing figures and, to the surprise and disappointment of absolutely no one, Inhumans was canned in May. Number 7. Animals HBO is a series known for taking risks, which is what they did with Animals back in 2015, ordering two seasons of the animated comedy which had premiered at Sundance Festival that year. Despite having a fun premise with a variety of guest stars lending their voices to a number of different creatures, it still didn't save the project from receiving mixed reviews. As a result, the third season was deemed to be its last. The comedy just couldn't find an audience, averaging around 185,000 viewers to stand as one of HBO's least watched series, which ultimately meant it had to go. Number 6. Ash vs Evil Dead Ash Williams may be a horror icon renowned for his fighting against the dead, but not even he was capable of battling declining ratings. Ash vs Evil Dead served as a solid continuation of the cult classic when it debuted on Stars in 2015, tapping into the following that Sam Raimi's movie trilogy had built up in the 80s and 90s, and was helped in no small part by Bruce Campbell reprising his most famous role. That, however, wasn't enough to sustain the show long term. While it had offered up some gloriously gory violence and schlocky 
fun, the ratings had declined significantly since it premiered, with the season 3 finale, which is now also the series finale, pulling in just 175,000 viewers compared to half a million for the season 1 finale. With the end of the show is also the end of Ash, thankfully not the one that we have here on What Culture, although to be fair, somebody could do with her oftener. Anyway, there were briefly calls for Netflix to step in and save the series, but Campbell himself put a stop to them, choosing to announce that he is now officially retired from the role. Number 5. The Big Bang Theory the Big Bang Theory is one of the biggest TV shows of the last 10 years, with the sitcom at its peak averaging around 20 million viewers per episode. It has been declining slightly in that regard for a little while now, but it still pulls in a viewership that most series and networks would kill for. So why is it ending? While Chuck Law and indeed CBS might have liked The Big Bang Theory to run on forever and ever, their hand was forced when star Jim Parsons announced that he had intentions to leave the series and pursue new opportunities. Law and CBS CBS were in renewal talks at the time, but without Parsons, the show had no future, because his Sheldon Cooper is the face of the series, whether you like it or not. And as such, things are set to wrap up this year, and the turtle without a shell who never seems to age will be unleashed upon the world once more. Number 4. Gotham Gotham has long been fighting cancellation with Fox, with poor reviews only compounding the rating slide that had seen the show lose a significant chunk of viewers year upon year, but it always just managed to squeak by. Right now, though, it's kind of run its course and kind of run out of ideas. Fox was set to can the series entirely, but instead made an 11th hour decision to cancel it after an impending fifth season, which will feature a dramatically reduced run of just 12 episodes to bring everything to a close. The show has especially struggled since moving to a Thursday night slot on Fox, dropping to an average viewership of 3.6 million in season 4, down from 4.52 and just 1.2 million in the 18 to 49 year old demographic. The worst thing about this is, though, is that Bruce isn't really in a fit shape to move into the role of Batman before the close, and we might end up with a series that's not only sad, but also feels completely rushed. Number 3. The Path Aaron Paul's career hasn't really taken off post Breaking Bad, which explains why he's so happy to reprise his role as Jesse Pinkman for the forthcoming movie, and that was compounded by the cancellation of The Path after just three seasons on Hulu. The Path focused on a family who are all members of a cult called the Meyerist Movement, which merged together aspects of various religions and movements. It received mild critical praise, but clearly not a massive audience. Hulu doesn't release viewership data, but the cancellation came amidst a period period of change for the streamer, with new executives coming in and a number of their older original series being scrapped in favour of bigger and buzzier shows, meaning it came to be the end of the road for the path. Puns, I've got them. Number 2. American Vandal True crime satire, American Vandal quickly became known as the show about dicks when it debuted in 2017, with its first mystery looking into who was responsible for spray painting a penis on each of the 27 cars in the staff parking lot at a US high school. The second season, which aired this year, centered on the turd burglar, an unknown person who was responsible for a wave of poop-related crimes in a new school with the same filmmakers called in to investigate. It sounds incredibly juvenile, and in one sense, it actually is. Is, but it's also one of the smartest crime series around and displays an understanding of teenagers few shows can actually match. And still, it's been cancelled. As is the case with most Netflix shows, there's no viewership data on the show, but it wouldn't have been cancelled if it was doing well. The premise has already been stretched with the second season, and so a third would probably feel incredibly forced, so this might actually be a blessing in disguise. And number one, the Netflix Marvel shows. For a long time, Netflix didn't cancel anything, but even when they started wielding the axe, it seemed as though the Marvel shows were going to be safe. Sure, the quality and hype had declined somewhat post the Defenders, but still, it was the MCU, one of the biggest and most profitable brands in the market. When Iron Fist was the first to fall, it was a surprise, but not one that set alarm bells ringing. The series had been the worst reviewed, and its second season had already reduced its episode count, so it was just a case of Netflix trimming the fat. A week later, though, and Luke Cage was being scrapped too, despite decent reviews. The worst, though, was yet to come. Those cancellations happened on the eve of Daredevil Season 3, which turned out to be one of the greatest seasons of superhero TV ever. And yet, just a month later, that too was cancelled, as Netflix's Marvel heroes were seemingly being snapped out of existence by an Infinity Gauntlet-wielding data cruncher. The 
few metrics that there are to go on suggest a decline in interest for most of the shows after the disappointment of the Defenders, which forms part of the reason they were cancelled. They also reportedly didn't carry much retention value, in meaning that people were going to stick around watching whether or not they actually had them on the Netflix streaming service, and since they had to pay big bucks for the rights, they came with a big markup cost that most Netflix originals don't. Add in the competition from Disney Plus and the diminishing returns Netflix were getting on the shows, and it becomes apparent why they cancelled them, and also why The Punisher and Jessica Jones are now on borrowed time. And there we go, those were 10 TV shows that were cancelled last year, and why? I wonder who's going to get the chop this year. Well, stay tuned because I'm sure that we'll dig up the data for you and deliver it in lovely list form. As always, I've been Jules, you have been awesome. Go follow me on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero, and then also go to shop.whatculture.com for all of your awful dead meme on a t-shirt needs. Anyway, speak to you soon. Bye!